Hello and welcome to another one of the meta discussion videos. I hope you will enjoy them. Um, I'm going to try and keep it a little bit more condensed than I have in the past, kind of cut down on the rambling a little bit. Uh, you know, fingers crossed, no guarantees. Uh, but today, what I really want to go into is going to be, as I'm sure you can see by the thumbnail, the title, and all that, all that is that we're going to be talking about Bandit. Now, First and foremost, let's go ahead and hop on into the loadout for Bandit. And we're going to see first and foremost is that we have the MP7 and the M870. And it's not really a decision, honestly. Um, you're going to be taking the MP7. And I'm not saying, no, don't take the M870 because it's a bad shotgun or yada, 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 or because it's a meme. The reason why I say don't take the M870 is because if you're looking for an operator that has a pump shotgun, you take up that call. Go ahead and pick um, Smoke or pick Echo because both of those operators have pretty good pump shotguns. And in addition to that, they also have an SMG, meaning that you're going to remain effective across all ranges rather than in this situation where if you take the M870, you are merely effective in close quarters and a bit screwed if they're anything past 10 meters. So kind of keep that to mind, hopefully. Um, <clears throat> but next on the MP7, which we will be taking as Bandit in most cases, um, is going to be really two attachments. And there is kind of a bit of a discussion going on with these. There's two primary popular barrel attachments, notably the Compensator and the Flash Hider. And it's important to note that these two are actually pretty similar in how they feel when you're playing as Bandit. Uh, Compensator and Flash Hider have long swapped back and forth between my personal preferences and I know a few of my friends as well. Uh, Flash Hider marginally beats Compensator in Burst Fire and Compensator marginally beats the Flash Hider in Prolonged Fire. So for me, since I've been playing with Burst Fire a little bit more often lately, I lean towards the flash hider. Now, both of these are fantastic attachments, both both good. Neither of them are wrong choices. Uh, it's definitely comes down to preference. I would advise that if anyone's kind of on the fence, try them both. Make a decision based on that. They were they're two kind of different play styles. It's not a huge difference, but something that you're going to have to decide and try for yourself to really feel it. Now, next, you'll note that there is no grip attachment because there is already a foregrip on the MP7, so no real choice in that matter. Um, and then you also have the laser sight attachment. And I would personally advise against it because as a roamer, you're going to be falling back and taking up a new angle and then falling back and taking up a new angle. And you really don't want to give that away to the attackers. You don't want to give them that little bit more of an advantage to know right where you are or where you're looking which can, in most cases, spell death for you. So, it's a little bit of an advice. It's a, it's a little bit of a risky pick. You don't get a whole lot of advantages from it, but, again, up to you. Now, after that, we have the ACOG. And the reason why I say we have the ACOG and not we have multiple scopes is because, for the most part, many players are picking ACOG. I think the vast majority are picking ACOG right now. Um, but it's important to note that I'm sure as everyone's aware, we are going to be having some lighting changes come into siege very shortly. And those lighting changes are going to affect being able to look outside and being able to look inside. So that actually is a big boon to the one time scopes, the hollow sight, the red dot, the reflex are going to be a lot more usable because one of the biggest reasons why you would take ACOG right now not only for the zoom is so that you can see outside of windows when you're trying to spawn peek or you're trying to shoot someone repelling on the window or right outside on the ledge or likewise if you're on the attacker side um the vice versa situation where you're looking into a window or looking uh <clears throat> looking through any kind of object like that or trying to enter a room with the lighting being a little bit more equalized the one-time scopes are going to be a significantly better choice and it's going to be a little bit of a hard decision for a lot of players, especially uh, especially me. A lot of players coming over from Counter-Strike where you don't have a zoom, 
one time scopes might feel a little bit more at home. So last but not least, we have barbed wire and we have C4. Now, it's important to note Bandit has three barbed wire, which is the most out of any operator. Uh, previously, some recruits equally had three barbed wire, but a previous patch has since removed that. And here's where we need to have the discussion of barbed wire versus C4. Now, this is something I've always said to everyone, whether it be in streams or lessons, whenever this question is asked, C4 versus barbed wire. I always repeat the same thing. C4 might get you a kill, but barbed wire is going to win you the round. And the reason I say this is because barbed wire is always going to remain the exact same effectiveness. It's never going to be different. It's always going to be three hits, one grenade, one ash charge. That will never change. Whereas C4, if you miss, you might get it. If you miss, you don't get a kill. If you hit it, you might get one kill. You might get two kills. You don't know. It's a variable. And it's a variable that's relatively inconsistent unless you're something like Pulse, if you're just going to be tossing it out. Whereas barbed wire is always effective. It's something that's always reliable. It's consistent rather than something that's inconsistent. So it's something that you should really, really focus down on because another way to look at it is that it's a passive effect rather than an active effect. Um, the barbed wire, even if you go run out and die in 10 seconds and you don't get a kill, your barbed wire is still going to help your team out even after you're dead. It's going to allow your teammates to have more opportunities to get kills. It's going to slow the attackers down, which in cases of low time could be the difference between a win or a loss. Whereas C4, if you run out and you didn't get a kill and you died, if you didn't use your C4, well, then you've already wasted that resource. But if you used your C4 and you missed, then again, you've wasted your resource. So barbed wire overall is a bit more of a consistent thing, and I definitely try to encourage people to utilize that a lot more. So next up, after we leave the loadout selection here, is let's go ahead and talk about the history of Bandit. Now, back in Season 1 and Season 2 of Year 1, Bandit tricking was extremely popular. Now, notably, let's go ahead and refer to this as the pre-Habana pre-Habana phase, and that's bandit tricking was really popular back then when Thermite was the only breacher, and you could, you know, you could get rid of the, you could get rid of the Thermite charges relatively easily back then, whereas now, you can't really bandit trick a Habana charge, especially after it's not gone off, so in season, um, in season three, we did see a little bit of straying away from bandit tricking to roaming, uh, because many people found out a lot of wallbang spots. But then in Season 4, we saw essentially a complete shutdown of any bandit tricking because of Habana uh, and her ability to keep her charges going off even if the wall is electrified afterwards. So we've seen that kind of general shift from bandit tricking to a little bit less once people figured out how to wallbang the bandit and to a near non-existence on many maps uh, with the exception of a few, which is kind of really site and map specific, notably things like clubhouse basement defense in the church or like border upstairs in the armory room are both sites where bandit does still see um, some bandit tricking or uh, primarily bandit tricking on there. So we've seen, I guess, a general shift of being chained down to the site to becoming a roamer, all because of just general game knowledge increasing and because of Habana. So it's going to be post Habana error here. And <clears throat> it's most common right now where we will see bandit to in the, in the prep phase. Well, bandit will go over battery. His walls will go over battery. Mira's walls is what we've started to see in this year two season one. We'll bandit the Mira walls because if he doesn't, then that means Habana has another free thing. So this is another thing motivated entirely by the advent of Habana. Now, let's go ahead and now talk about Bandit and how he kind of compares to the other roamers up there. Now, in my opinion, I kind of place Bandit as a top three roamer 
with the other two being Jaeger and Pulse. Uh, and I would say he kind of edges out Jaeger a little bit, in my opinion. Even though Jaeger's gun is a little bit more effective at distance, Jaeger's gun is relatively unpredictable, and its large horizontal recoil makes it difficult to control, makes it a little bit more of an inconsistent weapon, and whereas the MP7 is very easy, very predictable, purely vertical recoil, making it a really consistent gun to use. It behaves the same every single time you shoot it. 417 is a little bit more difficult and you're restricted to firing that gun in tap fire and burst fire whereas the mp7 allows you to be a little bit more flexible as a player now it the one thing that it does lose out to the 417 other than just you know damage um, well i guess still related to damage is that it has a really short drop off distance where it makes it a priority that you as a roamer have to go for headshots because if you're going for body shots it's going to end up taking you five, six, maybe more shots, depending on how far away from you. So in, in, in and in those situations, burst fire is going to be highly, highly encouraged because while it does have vertical recoil, it is still relatively intense and it might be hard to control. So burst fire, absolutely very helpful at long distance engagements, and you're really going to need to prioritize headshots. It is important to note, though, that Bandit or at least Bandit's MP7, is one of the few SMGs that suffers from the low damage headshot downs. Now, the way to avoid this, or at least actually, let's go ahead and discuss how it happens in the first place. Bandit's damage at distance is so little that if it additionally goes, to, goes through a penetrable object like glass or wood or any kind of any, kind of any penetration, really, it will end up headshot downing. So if you are going for these kind of kills, kind of pay attention to it. If you can, break the glass or break a hole, something that you can shoot through. Uh, so that way you can avoid that headshot down issue. It's not some bullshit mechanic or anything like that. The devs aren't screwing with you. It's just that the damage is very, very low. And it's something really important to remember whenever you're going to be using Bandit. So I guess that's about it. I guess be aware of those issues. Um, let's go ahead. In conclusion, I guess, uh, Bandit, very highly picked operator, extremely relevant still, and will probably be relevant in the future. He has a strong primary weapon. He has three speed, which makes him an absolutely fantastic roamer. And the one thing that I would have, or I guess maybe two things that are going to be really important to pay attention to in the future is going to see how the upcoming lighting change affects his own uh, weapon site changes and even more importantly is going to see how it affects his pick rate and the reason why is because there are a lot of other well not a lot of other there is one other operator that's kind of in the darkness right now and that's mute a hollow site only operator someone who doesn't have access to an ACOG that will benefit immensely from this lighting change will might make him a pretty good roamer to pick up already we're seeing many teams run mute over the bandit and with the lighting change making it extremely easy to use to use those one-time scopes in most environments whereas previously you were restricted to entirely interior battles it might widen his usefulness to where he might start taking that pick rate a little bit more from bandit than he already has so that'll be something really, really important to keep your eye on. Um, I definitely personally expect to see Mute have a sharp rise after this uh, lightning patch comes out. But maybe we'll make a follow-up video that on that in the future after the patch. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any comments or criticisms or anything about the video so I can try and improve them in the future. Uh, I already added in this video, went through and uh, did a little bit of not a little bit of background gameplay uh, while I'm talking, you know, for those of you out there that just can't quite manage to keep focused during the whole video. Got to give you something to look at. Got to give you the eye candy. Apparently my face just wasn't enough for you guys. I see. It's OK. It's OK. I'll make it through. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching the video. Remember the classic YouTube saying of uh, remember to like subscribe click the little notification bell. Make sure you get informed of the next video. We'll probably be pumping out some series like this more often. 
Um, but yeah, see you next time, guys. Make sure to tune into the stream as well. Links down in the description.